we're going to continue this morning with Daring to Dream. And we are going to add our person of today. When I was a little boy, I would climb up in this mango tree in my yard. It was a huge tree in my yard in Miami. And I loved climbing up there because when I was up there, I felt very teeny tiny small looking out at the world. And I thought, well, how am I going to fit into this world? Who am I? What am I going to be? What is my dream going to be? Well, I'm here today to tell you my story. I was born on a blue sky Sunday morning in Jacksonville, Florida. I was a brown-skinned, bright-eyed, bow-legged boy, and my mom named me Robert. And my Uncle Willie and my Aunt May, my Aunt Anna, came right away to see me that first night. Uncle Willie said that I was no bigger than a loaf of bread. Now, my mom had lived on hard times, so Uncle Willie and Aunt Anna said that they would take me with them, and I would live with them. So I went to live with them for a little while, but then Aunt Anna became ill. So we moved down to Miami, Florida, and we moved in with my, aunt, with my cousin, Desi. And the minute she saw me, she was an English teacher, she wrote poetry, she played the piano in a church, and the minute she saw me, she loved me as her own. Now my favorite place to be was out on the back porch because my mama, Desi, belonged to a group called the African Culture. And they sang spirituals out on the back porch. And I would go out there at rehearsal time and they'd recite poetry from Mari Evans and they'd recite poetry from Maya Angelou. It was my favorite place to be. On Sunday morning, I'd go up onto the pulpit and I would sing with the choir and Mama Jesse would play the piano and we'd sing, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I loved to be up there. Now after Sunday, we'd go home, we'd have a big Sunday dinner and I'd have to put these braces on my legs because when I was born, I told you I was bowling and my legs weren't straight, and it was very painful to walk. So I had to wear these braces every night. It didn't feel very good, but I knew eventually, and I trusted in God, that eventually my legs would get straight. Well, sure enough, by the time I was six, I was able to get those braces off. I was so excited that my braces were off, and on top of it, it was Easter Sunday, and I practiced a little speech, and on that day, I strode up to the top of the pulpit. I had on my Easter suit, and I practiced, and I said, my name is Robert Battles. I feel six feet tall. I came here to say, happy Easter day. And I came back down, and I realized then, part of my dream, I wanted to be center stage. I would play the piano in my living room. I would dance all around. I never was brave enough to go out of my living room quite yet. I felt very safe and secure in my living room. But you know, outside my house, I didn't always feel so, so safe. People called me names, really bad names, that made me hurt as bad as my legs hurt when I had to have those braces on. So my mom and Desi thought maybe karate was the answer to make me feel strong and confident. So I was 12 years old. I went to karate class, and I learned all the moves, and I stomped around. It felt like dancing to me without the music. But my dream really began when I was 13. And I went to Uncle Willie, and I said, I just don't want to be any kind of dancer. I want to be a ballet dancer. Now, I know the odds were against me. Most people had danced since they were probably five or six. Most were probably girls. Not too many were African American, but I really wanted to do it. And Mama Desi and Uncle Willie said, you can do it. 
So they enrolled me in a class after school in the African Cultural Center. And I worked really hard for those two years. And when I got to high school, I joined an after school class with Ms. Nunez, who was my teacher. She saw something special in me. I was lucky. She piled me up with ballet books and ballet magazines. She drove me there early in the morning. She practiced with me after school. She even came on Saturdays. And one day I said to her, I got up the nerve and I said, do you think I could be a famous ballet dancer? She said, you can be whatever you want to be. So I kept on working. But what really changed my life was when I went on a field trip with my high school class to see the Alvin Ailey dance troupe. I sat there in amazement. Here before me was my past, just as David said, my present and my future, happening right up there on the stage. Plus, there was people who looked just like me, and they were telling my story. Now I knew what my dream was. I had to be a part of that. So I worked even harder in high school. And then I decided I needed to go to another school, so I worked and worked on my audition, and I got into the New World School. But now my high school days were ended, and I knew I had to do something even bigger. So I worked, and I auditioned, and I got into the Juilliard School of Dance, which he lived down in, my, in Florida, and that was way up in New York. Willie and Mama Desi said I could do it. So they drove me to the airport. I got there, didn't know anyone with my suitcase full of clothes, wondering what would happen. So I worked very, very hard and at the school. And I soon became so good at what I could do. I was choreographing and making my own dances that I started my own, my own company called Battleworks. And from that, Alvin Ailey saw me. And he asked me to be his artistic director. And the day I stepped out on that stage at the Alvin Ailey Troop, I knew that I had achieved one of my dreams. And I knew I had done it because I had imagination, I worked hard, and I had people who supported me, just like each of you have. Whatever your dream may be, with God by your side, and those people around whom you believe it, and you work hard and you imagine it, you can be anything. Let us pray. Dear God, you are the guider of all of our dreams. Help us to realize that we can do anything with you by our side, with surrounding our people, us with people who love us, and working on our dream. Amen.